following a dream, she's co-created an infant warmer at less than 1% of what traditional incubators cost. She's saving lives with humanitarian design. Please welcome Jane Chen. How are you? Well, thank you. Thank you so much for making the time. I know you are really, really busy. <laughs> thank you for having me. Um, you know, Jane, when I was in college, I took an Eastern philosophy class. And uh, there's just one thing that really made an impression on me. And uh, it's, it's, it's something uh, called Li. Do you know about this? It's, it's actually from uh, Chinese philosophy. And it's really stayed with me for a long time. And the Li means your underlying reason or purpose in life. So, so every, you know, after that class, I would, every year I question, you know, what is my Li? What is my Li? Why am I here? You know, what is my purpose in life? And so, you know, when I worked through my corporate job, I was like, this is not my Li, you know? <laughs> so I just think, you know, it's a really, it's, it's a really good question to keep asking yourself. So, you know, you, you had this idea, the Embrace Infant Warmer came to you at a very young age. And I just, you know, I want to know, you, you, you were so young. How did you realize that this is your Li to, to work, you know, that your work has to have a large social impact? You know, most people in their 20s are doing their MBA at Stanford. They just want to be an investment banker or create eBay or something like that. Why do you want to help everyone? Uh, well, I was working in uh, management consulting before doing my MBA at Stanford, and that was definitely not, not my lead. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew I wanted to do something that I was really passionate about, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure what it was at the time. Right. So that something came to me one day while reading an article in the newspaper about the AIDS epidemic in China. Mm -hmm. And what happened was in the 90s, millions of poor farmers contracted HIV through selling their blood. But the oh, yes, oh it was terrible. It was a huge government-run campaign, um, but the way the blood was collected was very unsanitary. So they would basically go around, collect people's blood, pull it together, separate the plasma, uh -huh. and then re-inject the remaining red blood cells into every person's body in the belief oh that this would allow them to give blood again more quickly. Mm -hmm. And as a result of this, in the villages I ended up working in, about 60 to 80 percent of the adult population was HIV positive. Oh my goodness. It was wiping out an entire generation of people and leaving behind millions of orphans. Oh and when I read that story, um, for some reason, a light bulb in my head went off. And I realized that, that we, all of us here, have won the genetic lottery. Right. right? We're amongst the 0.1% of the luckiest people in the world, but that I could have just as easily been born into a different life and suffered this terrible fate as a result. So I uh, quit my consulting job. I packed up my bags. I moved to China. I worked with an NGO that was helping children um, to obtain an education, the orphans who were left behind. Mm -hmm. um, and in the two years that I worked with that foundation, we helped over 3,000 kids. But more importantly, the government stepped in and they changed the, the policy to give free medication to all the HIV positive patients and free education to all the orphans. Wow. So I realized, yeah, it's amazing. So I realized through that experience that with a very small group of committed, passionate people, we were able to make huge social change. And that set the path for what I wanted to do later. What I also saw was this enormous disparity in healthcare between what I saw in the US where you know, I, I, I was living, where anyone could get HIV AIDS medication, and what I saw in China and later in Africa, where although these medications exist, they were just not accessible to these people. And it became a personal passion of mine at that time to try to bridge that disparity in healthcare I saw. Mm -hmm. So when I went to Stanford and I took this, this course, um, about making affordable technology. I just jumped at the opportunity uh, to work on this project that led to the Embrace Warmer. This is what I just love about what you're doing is that it came out of, you know, most people go to school, but you're like, you know, how is this going to apply to my life? You know, is it, so uh, you, this Embrace Warmer, uh, Infant Warmer came um, because of a class that you took yeah. and it was a collaboration with some, was it Harvard students? 
Um, no, it was all at Stanford. So okay. I was doing my MBA at the time, and I teamed up with a group of engineers um, okay. in a class called Design for Extreme Affordability. Okay. So it's half MBAs, half engineers, and you come together to develop uh, affordable solutions for people living on less than a dollar a day. Mm -hmm. And the challenge posed to me at the time was build a baby incubator that costs less than 1% of the cost of a traditional incubator. Very, very interesting. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just curious. There are four of you who had this idea, worked on it, so you're all co-founders. Yep. How do you end up as CEO? <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? I mean, and you pick straws or... And the only woman in the group, right? Right. <laughs> That's why. Well, you could call it being bossy or you could call <laughs> it leadership. Good, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Well, I was the only one in the group um, with an MBA, so it was a pretty natural oh, choice. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Good thinking. <laughs> but it was funny because as we were deciding, the, the company is called Embrace now, and as we were deciding names for the product, uh -huh. all the guys were like, oh, robo incubator. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes. Yeah, plastic placenta was a name <laughs> they came up with. And I said, what about Embrace? And they all said, oh, that's way too girly. No, no, Oh, we no. love it. It's just like, it's, it's just like a hug, <laughs> isn't exactly. it? So uh, actually, you brought a very interesting video. So maybe yeah. you could play that now. Sure. So just before we play the video, um, this is a little bit of the research we did. So basically, as we started working on this project, we realized the magnitude of the problem in that about 20 million low birth weight and premature babies are born every year around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and in India alone, there's 8 million of these babies born every year. So one out of every three babies in India is born premature or underweight. And the video I'm going to show is as we started um, visiting all of these villages, we would hear not just the numbers, but the personal stories of the women. And that's really what drives us to do this. ಉತ್ತರಾಫುಲ್ಲುಗೆ <laughs> This was taken about 45 minutes outside of Bangalore. Mm -hmm. But we would hear this story over and over again in every village that we went to. Mm -hmm. And did you do this before or after your MBA? Um, this was during and after as well. So as a part of this project, you, part you, of this project, you yeah. want to see it through and you started doing research and you know, field research. Yeah, and came out and yeah. Okay. exactly. Um, so we would see this firsthand and what we came to quickly realize was we needed a solution, not a, a lower cost version of what exists today, but we need a solution that could work in these settings where oftentimes there's no electricity or inconsistent electricity. Mm -hmm. We needed something that was portable, that was easy enough for a mother or a midwife to use, given that in India, there's one doctor for every 2,000 patients. This is the Embrace infant warmer. It looks nothing like an incubator. It looks like a little sleeping bag for a baby. It's made out of entirely waterproof material, so you can use it over and over again. But the magic is back here. So this is a pouch of what's called a phase change material. It's a wax-like substance that you can heat uh, either with boiling water or with a little electric heater. But the key to this is once it melts, it maintains a constant temperature for up to eight hours at a stretch. Fantastic. Yeah, and that's the most important part of keeping the baby alive and healthy. It's not just the warmth but that consistency right. of the temperature. Many of these preterm babies suffer from hypothermia because they're so tiny, they don't have enough body fat to regulate their own temperature. And that's the primary function of an incubator. Right. Um, and so that's what we've replicated here, but in a very low tech, low cost way. Tell me about the science behind this. Tell me about how this was developed, where, where it was developed. Was, is this a patented substance? It is, so we patented, Embrace has the patent now. We developed the concept while we were in school. 
Um, and it was basically taking some old concepts. So the idea of using phase change materials for temperature regulation is a very old one. It's used in buildings. It's used in cell phone towers. So we basically took that concept and just applied it to the baby warmer. Um, but as simple as it looks, this has gone through hundreds of iterations. Uh, right after the class, we all moved to India because we knew we wanted to be close to our customers so we could make this truly locally appropriate. We didn't want to be you know, a technology that was developed in the West and then transplanted to India. Mm -hmm. So, um, so pa your pilot project has been in India? Yeah, so we've it, been here for the last four years. Any is it have you tried any other countries yet? Um, so we're now doing pilots in 10 countries. We've been in India for the longest. Um, we're in Uganda, in Guatemala, Mexico, most recently in Afghanistan. Um, so helping wow. as many babies as possible <laughs> around the world. Fantastic. Thank you. And so you've been in India, what, four, five years? Mm -hmm. How has the move been for you professionally and personally? Yeah. Um, I won't lie, it's definitely been challenging. Right. It's definitely been challenging. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are parts of India that I, that I love, and I especially love being in the rural areas where the hospitality is so incredible, right. and unlike any country that I've been to. Right, um, they'll give you more than they have, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But I also want to pull out my hair sitting in uh, Bangalore traffic. Or in right, traffic. and Indian, Indian standard time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So um, you've been featured in the Wall Street Journal, is that right? And you, you've done a, a very interesting TED Talk, and uh, the, World the, the World Economic Forum named you as a young global leader. <laughs> how, how is that? Tell me about the, the World Economic Forum. It's great. It's fantastic. I mean, they're all wonderful accolades, but I really liked what Naina said earlier, because they don't go to me. They go to my team. They go to everyone who's made this possible. <laughs> So we have some uh, pictures. So this is um, our work in, in China, actually. We work with an orphanage called Little Flower Orphanage in Beijing. They rescue babies from all around the world. And I'll tell you a wonderful story. Um, there was a baby, Baby Long, who, who's not here in this picture, uh, but was at this orphanage. He was 950 grams when they found him on the side of a road. They brought him to the orphanage. They kept him in the warmer for 30 days. And he survived. He was the first baby of that size to survive in the Fantastic. orphanage. Um, but what's even more exciting is uh, in February, he turned one. And I went to visit. Oh, and he was very happy and healthy. And it was wonderful to see that. And then last month, we got a letter. Um, from parents in the U.S. saying, we have just adopted Baby Long. Wow, what a story. Yeah, and thank you for saving and his life. One day you'll go to Baby Long's graduation. I hope so. I I'm hope so. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see the next picture? So this is um, Kirti. This is in Karnataka. Um, Kirti lost her first baby, as many of the women we've met have. Mm -hmm. She gave birth to a second baby that was, uh, I think, about a little over one, one kilo, was kept in our product, and then this is the baby three months later. Fantastic. She looks really healthy. You have so much good karma coming your way. I hope you know that. <laughs> well, maybe that'll help me find my right partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need that and <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and you know, I'm just curious. This seems to be like a great product. Do do people in in urban places use it? Why shouldn't everybody? Is it just for developing countries? I mean, why can't everybody use it? Um, actually, we have it being uh, used in in Cloud Nine hospitals. So even even oh, in really? the highest end hospitals, it's right. being used. Um, because the advantage is it allows mothers to be right next to their babies instead of completely right. isolated in the incubators. Right. And yeah. what does it cost? So we have two versions. We have one that sits in a hospital setting that requires um, uh, intermittent electricity. That product is about 12,000 rupees. And then we have a product that uh, goes home with the parent. And that one costs about 4,000 rupees. Very, very inspiring, Jane. But I'm not going to let you go yet. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to my quickies. So you have been in India, what did you say, four or five years? Four years. So I hope you've experienced Indian Chinese food. Yes. All right. What vegetable is Gobi Manchuri made of? Cauliflower. Very good. 
Okay, very good. What what part of the vegetable is used in another Indian Chinese dish called vegetable balls in garlic sauce? Okay, I'm gonna guess broccoli. <laughs> no, it is the entire vegetable. Uh -huh. What does this mean? Get out of my way. <laughs> yes. Okay, what does this mean? <laughs> yes, no, maybe. <laughs> Actually, it means where's my library card? <laughs> okay, The Economist or People magazine? Hmm, Be honest. Let's see. Okay, The Economist in a coffee shop, People in the bathroom. <laughs> Good. Whew, she's normal. Mac and cheese or masala dosa? Masala dosa. <laughs> Good answer. Milk or dark chocolate? Dark chocolate. Your favorite thing about India? My favorite thing about India, the festivals. Great. <laughs> Jane Chen, everybody.